guys, <clears throat> this is the fourth segment of the mineral chapter. And on this slide, I'm showing you how the sodium ion forms. So here we have sodium. And remember, the sodium has, if you look at the periodic table, it has 11 protons and 11 electrons. And uh, right here, I'm showing you the, uh, the electrons located in the, in the structure. On the first selection shell, there is two. Second one is eight, as I already told you. And eight, eight plus two is equal ten. So the outermost electron shell will have one electron right there. Now, is the sodium ion happy? Oh, I am too close, sorry. Is the sodium ion happy? The sodium atom, I should say. Is the sodium atom happy? No, because it has just one electron on the outermost shell. And remember, when are they happy? Yeah, when they ha have eight. Now look, if, if, if this electron wasn't here, then this would be, if this electron wasn't here, then this would be the outermost. And this has one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight. So this would be perfectly happy. So all it has to do is just lose that one electron. So it goes to the bar and will not leave until actually can get rid of that one electron. You know, have you ever been there and, and told yourself that the only way you leave there if you can actually find somebody to take home? I mean, that's how the sodium feels exactly, that it will not leave until it can get rid of that one electron. So let's say at the beginning, we have 11 proton, 11 electron, and that means 11 plus and 11 minus is equal to zero, so therefore it's neutral. But when it does lose that one electron, then it has 11 proton, 10 electron, and it has one positive charge. And when, when you lose one electron and you, become, you have one extra positive charge, then sodium is not a neutral atom anymore, but it becomes a so-called ion. Ion is the word for an atom which does have an electric charge. So remember, that just means, ion just means that it's not neutral anymore. It could be positive or negative. This case, because it lost one electron, it will be positively charged, and we call that cation, cation. Okay, so this is the new symbol, Na, that's the sodium, and it has one positive charge right there. So don't forget, by losing the electron, which happened in this case, sodium become a positive ion with one positive charge. So you write down the symbol of the sodium and put that plus right there. And that's how you do it. Now, if we go over to the other side and we look at chlorine, remember chlorine has 17 proton and 17 electron. We are in, in the seventh row now, like right here. This here is the, the noble gases, and row 17 is right next to it, like right there. So chlorine is right there, so it has seven valence electrons, one, two, four, five, six, seven. So sodium is very unhappy because it needs one more to have eight. So therefore, when the sodium is in the bar, the chlorine is there too. And actually, they start talking with a beer in their hand and they say, so what do you need to be happy? And then sodium says, I need to get rid of an electron I have extra. And the chlorine says, I'm here to gain an electron. So they exchange it and this is how the ionic bond will form, just as you will see on the next slide. So here we are. The sodium originally has 17 protons and 17 neutrons, so it has no charge. But when it gains that one electron, it will lose its neutrality. And because it gained an electron, it has 18 negative and 17 positive. So now it will have one negative charge. So the neutral atom became an ion by gaining that one electron. And the negatively charged ion, remember ion just means that it's not neutral. But when it's negatively charged, we call it an ion. And the symbol for it is Cl. 
and then one negative charge. Now, if you were in group 16, they would be needing two electrons, so therefore they will be two negative. So oxygen, for example, will have two negative charges. And this is how you show it, like two plus. And on the other side, like in group two, like in this uh, group two, like right here, the magnesium will have two valence electrons, so they have to get rid of two electrons. So it's oxygen is two negative. I am so sorry. So it's two negative because it needs to gain electron, whereas magnesium is going to lose two electrons, so it will be two positive. So oxygen is two negative, magnesium is two positive. And if you go down in, in group 7, sulfur, it's going to be 2 negative. Calcium is going to be 2 positive and so on. So this takes us to the, to the ionic bond. So when we have an ionic bond, the keyword for ionic bond is losing or gaining. I say lose. Gain. So losing or gaining electrons, that is the keyword. If you just know that, you're going to be good to go. So I can put the sodium, which is true, right here, and put the chlorine right here. And, you know, sodium is giving away, and chlorine is gaining that one electron. And we can actually write it down as an equation right here. So you see Na plus plus Cl minus is going to be NaCl. We, we, NaCl is an ionic compound as it says right here. And you know what that is. It's your salt. So we put together these two horrible elements and sodium is so reactive that you have to keep it in the back of the chemistry lab in dark glasses with really good uh, very strong top and when you open it it's like explosively react with oxygen the chlorine is the very bad gas which hitler killed the jewish people with and you put these two together you're gonna make it's gonna be salt salt without which we couldn't live salt is the most important uh ionic bond for us you know if we didn't have enough salt we would die really so you have to see that how important it is that these elements actually bond with each other to make like very um, friendly, I should say, minerals which are good for us. Even, even though these elements are very reactive and very dangerous, when you put them together, they will make life possible. So just think about that. It's interesting. Okay, the next one is the covalent bond. When you have covalent bond, we are talking about elements in the periodic table but which have like four or five valence electrons out there, like the carbon. The carbon actually has six proton and six electron, and the first electron shell has two, so the outermost one will have four, like one, two, three, and four. So four electron is really hard to get rid of or gain, so what they do, they actually line up with four other carbon atoms and they making electron pairs, they sharing electrons with each other. This two electron makes an electron pair and they will go around both new, neutron here, I mean a, a nucleus here and here. So these two carbon atoms will not only orbiting one nucleus but two on a on a, a shape like this right there so they are defined they make an electron pair and both nucleus fills them like they've been orbited by two electrons and all four electrons doing the same thing so basically each nucleus will fill eight electrons and they don't know that they are being shared the main thing is that they have eight electrons going around them so they are happy this is what we call covalent bond and the keyword for the covalent bond is sharing you know how many people are actually sharing even with, without knowing it 
like like that electron doesn't know that the the nucleus doesn't know that those electrons not only going around it but the next one too they don't know they feel that they have them so they're absolutely happy and the sharing the covalent bond is the strongest bond ever basically the structure i just drew you is the diamond structure and as you know the diamond is the most powerful most strongest uh diamond. it's out here the strongest mineral in the whole world so so it's really really uh, interesting how the covalent bond makes it so so strong now the last one is the so-called metallic bond metallic bond happens in between the elements in the middle you see this is here the one side this is the other side so these elements will do the so-called metallic bond not always but sometimes and when you have a metallic bond that just means that the valence electrons are not defined into one atom but they can just go around so they go here they go there so they're changing which nucleus to orbit so therefore you've got a bunch of these freely moving electrons and that is what makes the metals actually like copper iron the the gold, the silver, they can conduct electricity because they have this free moving electron. So this is kind of interesting. So these are the three kinds of bonds you will have to know. Remember the ionic is the gaining and losing electrons, the covalent is sharing, and the metallic is when you have the freely moving electrons. So now, what defines the structure of a crystal first of all the charge of the ion is it like one positive two positive could even be three positive when when sometimes three electron goes away how big the ion is is it on the left or is it going to the right where it's more um, and uh, the number of the surrounding ions because every cation will be surrounded by as many an ion as it possible it could be four six or eight so that is a very very important factor in the crystalline structure and uh, last but not least is the pressure and the temperature of the formation this is very important because like if we talk about diamond versus graphite both of those are carbon the one is 10 on the hardness scale the other one is is one on the hardness scale so uh, it's definitely the pressure and the temperature which makes this difference so the diamond will form very high pressure and temperature environment very high pressure and temperature whereas the carbon will form at low temperature and look the diamond has much more dense uh, structure much more dense Whereas the graphite has a covalently bounded sheet and in between the sheets you have relatively big distance. So therefore when you write with the graphite, these sheets are coming off. Okay? Because they are farther away so definitely weak in between the sheets. And the reason for that is because the diamond forms the extremely high pressure temperature and the uh, graphite forms at low pressure and temperature. And now we're going to talk about the physical properties of minerals. In the physical properties, we'll talk about crystal form, cleavage, color, luster, hardness, trick, uh, acid test, magnetism, and taste. So the first one is the crystal form, but I guess I'm going to stop right here and we'll continue later on.